Thanks for coming. A uh, couple comments. Oh, did I have the champions? Did I grab the champions? I did not. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Um, uh, I want to thank our uh, students and fans. And uh, we finished. I guess, I'm not sure when the last time we've done this. Maybe it's recently. I'm not aware. That's something Jerry would know. But we finished the finished the uh, year at number one in student attendance. When I, you know, people say it's declining, not at Ohio State, and we're very grateful to our students. And it's a student-run program, so uh, we do a lot of things in the off season to make sure we never uh, not appreciate that. I notice sometimes. I noticed this 13 years ago, or whenever I first had the opportunity to be head coach, that you're always talking about boosters and talking about maybe corporate sponsorship and all that. The people that you forget are the students, and so we don't do that here. Um, with Gene Smith and our administration and our players and coaches, we try to do as much as we can. Uh, every year we do a multitude of things with our student body. One's the practice, one's the community service, and then we always do that uh, quick house, and that's for the student body. And so the minute you uh, quit uh, being appreciative of the students, uh, you lose them, and we don't want to lose them. Uh, so we're very grateful to them. Second is the fans. We uh, led the country in total attendance, over 106,000 people in that wonderful stadium and very appreciative of that because once again I, I hear about people losing fans and, and uh, we don't do that here. We try to do the best we can to show appreciation for them. Uh, also, a group of seniors. We have a saying around here, respect's not given, it's earned. And uh, these seniors that we uh, say goodbye to, uh, even though they still have more games, uh, came in as freshmen and lost seven games as a freshman. Uh, had a losing record. Excuse me, uh, did we have, yeah, six and seven, right? Six and seven, losing record. Uh, had a bowl game taken away from them when they had really nothing to do with anything. And they come back, and here's what they've earned. Three division championships, won 35 of the last 38 games they played. Uh, 24 straight wins, longest in Ohio State history. Uh, three, uh, three straight years without losing a conference game, first time ever in the Big Ten. And uh, the second winning this group of players in college football right now uh, in the last three years. So uh, the challenge I have for them and uh, the challenge around here is now go finish the job. The one thing you notice I did not mention in there was a championship. And that's an opportunity to get it done this week. So it's championship week here at Ohio State. And uh, exciting times. Also about JT, talked to him last night. He should be over here at some point today. Had surgery. It went well. Um, he had a very similar injury to Evan Spencer that he had uh, in the bowl game last year, and obviously Evan's recovered uh, without any issues whatsoever, and so they're anticipating the same with JT. Uh, we love JT. I personally have an incredible amount of respect for him, uh, as our entire team and Buckeye Nation does because of uh, who he is. And the more you'll get to know him uh, the next several years, he's just a wonderful young man that uh, – is an incredible leader, works extremely hard at his trait. Uh, he is a Heisman candidate, too, and he should be invited to New York. And if he's not, that's, there's something wrong. He has Heisman statistics. Um, I did a little research on that. Obviously, I got asked that question several weeks ago, and I didn't know. But he's got uh, uh, very uh, excellent statistics, and he's a leader of uh, uh, one of the top five teams in America. So I hope that uh, that young man is invited to New York, and he should be. Uh, we're facing an excellent team. Uh, Gary Anderson's a, a dear friend of mine, great, great football coach. We worked together at Utah, uh, and uh, what he's done. They lost their front seven on defense. We just, you know, I just had a meeting, went through it with our staff, and uh, to come back and lead the country. I think they're leading the country. They're top, top ten in off, uh, pass defense and rush defense. Uh, very, very good players, but extremely well coached. And obviously we understand that there's also another Heisman guy going to be on the field, uh, Gordon, who is, uh, well, Gary tells me the best thing about it, he's a wonderful kid, a young man too. So that's, uh, that's good for college football. And uh, we're, we're honored to represent the East and, uh, and Indianapolis and do the best we can to uh, bring Ohio State a, another championship. So I'll answer any questions for you. Herman, what's the last 24 hours like? I'm sure there's not a chapter or coaching manual to turn to, to to deal with what you've had to deal with in the last 24 or 48 hours. How do you cope with it, manage it, coach through it? Yeah, it's been a tough week. Um, Shelly and I were talking about last night. Last uh, last week we were told Noah Spence, which I don't agree with, by the way, was uh, because of performance-enhancing drugs, just had his career taken away. It wasn't performance-enhancing drugs. Um, so 
that's another story in its own. But uh, that was disappointing. A three-point student who made a uh, mistake that a lot of young people make, social issue. That uh, and I credit Ohio State for really dealing with doing the best we can. The good thing is extremely positive what's going on in his life right now. And that's a credit to, once again, our administration and not turning her back on a, on a person. Uh, so really disappointed in that uh, last week. And then, uh, and then obviously a young man goes missing. And obviously we lose JT Barrett. And obviously the tragic use last night. So it's, um, I, told, uh, I told our players, uh, you, you add in the fact you lost your Heisman preseason candidate beginning of the season. You had uh, our captain not really, we didn't have our offensive captains play the first four or five games of the year. I said, you shouldn't be in this situation. Uh, so you have to really, re- you have to really um, reflect upon how that happened. You know, it's not, there's not good fortune. The ball didn't bounce your way. We don't believe in that. We believe in a very extremely close team, an extremely close team that uh, leans on each other in tough times. And someone usually steps up and makes a tremendous play or, or says something or like Mike Bennett has really grown up as a leader. So that team, uh, you know, is all, every red flag's up. You know, every excuse is out there to not play well, to not win a game, to lose a game. And, and uh, you have some really good built-in excuses. And to overcome the incredible tragedy that happened last night, this is a real challenge. And uh, uh, we're not uh, we're going to watch it very closely. Uh, I can just tell you this: extremely close team that uh, does a lot of things together and cares about each other. Can it work, can it work into your advantage when you almost seems to have a, a tipping point of adversity where you guys sort of bond together and it's. Well, I hate to, when you use the term advantage. It's pretty hardcore. Um, I, I don't know that. I mean, this is life lessons, and the, the, this is so much deeper than uh, lining up on a football field. But uh, to answer your question, you know, uh, adversity at times, if it's real, if it's a real close group, it sometimes brings it closer together. That was your asking. <clears throat> I guess there are two ways to look at this. You've waited all year to get back to this point, point of unfinished business from last year, and yet now you've got all this stuff, I mean, real stuff that you're dealing with. Is there a sense that, okay, all this is against us, and let's go show the world nobody nobody believes us? Bill, we were off today. You know, we, we uh, right at the end of practice, we had a long chat with our players about what happened, and uh, I'll know more tomorrow. You know, I'll know more tomorrow. A lot of the good thing is I see a bunch of guys popping around here. That's the other sign of a good team. Uh, when I first got here, Coach Drayton told me the one thing that you're not going to like is we're off campus a little bit, you know, the facility, is you're not going to see the players around very much. And I don't like that at all. I mean, that's, I love to, I, I don't like that meeting room. I like to go talk to the guys and go in the weight room. And, and uh, so we created an atmosphere around here where the locker room, the obviously the food, that's a good way to get them over here. And uh, really, you only made the, we brought the training, there wasn't the training table over here. We didn't have a locker room like it is now. We really didn't have a lounge area that the guys are, they bring their food in, they have iPads, and, and so it's a much different atmosphere where they're, they're always over here. And the reason I'm probably in a good mood right now is I've seen about 40 players come popping through. Hey, Coach, how's it going? And put your arm around them and talk about stuff. And, and that's what makes coaches' days. You know, when, when uh, we're sitting in there in the offense line, I was walking around now flying in those guys. And, and uh, uh, that's, that's what gets families through a tough situation. Florida, you dealt with player deaths and, and it's not, not an experience you want to want to have, but it, but it is something that you've experienced. How do you, as a coach, help that process? Great question. You know, I, I the first time it happened, it was a long time ago, and it was uh, I called Chris Carter. You know, and he dealt with it when he was a player at the Minnesota Vikings. And by the way, I want to thank Chris as well. I asked him to come back and be part of it. And boy, was he part of it. He was at dinner with us Friday night. I made our players aware that's uh, that's giving back to your school and your program. And I know he had some issues when he was here, but my gosh, he's all in and he really supports our players and, and our coaching staff in Ohio State. Uh, but he dealt with it, and uh, you know, I reached out to some people back then, and, and uh, uh, it's difficult. I mean, there's no, like you said, there's no. You can look in the coaching manual. I'm not sure you'll find anything. But the tighter the group, the the better opportunity you have to, you know. You'll never get over it. It's uh, an opportunity to, uh, I'm not sure you learn the appropriate word either, but just continue to grow and stay on your journey. Uh, 
Well, earlier you said last week that even though your mom told you you were good, you couldn't be a part of the last state of Michigan or wherever. I'm just wondering, you were a walk-on in Cincinnati. What, what was it like being a walk-on there, and what's it like being a walk-on now? No, it was much different. Uh, um, now, the NCA, one of the great things they did is everyone eats. And one of the hardest things when I was a coach where, you know, we have a team meeting room, and right here, uh, maybe a couple of scholarship guys, and that guy's a walk-on. He's playing a lot more than you, but he can't eat after practice. And, I mean, every dollar counts with these young guys. And so, you know, I have two guys, Joe, uh, Joe Berger and Craig Fader. They're as important as any scholarship player on his team. Leadership, toughness, and, and they contribute on special teams. And I was sitting with them one day, and, and uh, it was a Joe told me that it saves him $3,000 a semester now because we're allowed to feed them. So it's much different. And uh, the approach I've always taken is ever since I've always been, if I'm going to lose between a walk-on and a scholarship guy, I'm taking care of the scholarship for the walk-on player. And uh, as far as playing time, as far as opportunity on special teams, because I believe those guys deserve that shot. Simply because you get guys that are here because they love football, but they're having their schooling paid for. But you get other guys that are here that love football, but they're not. Well, it challenges you. I mean, uh, I think I, I, my experience is the opposite. Those kids love every second of it. They want to do it. You know, to say every scholarship there, there's some scholarship guys in this program. They don't like it. They don't like it at all. They're doing it because they get their school paid for. And um, we try to not have too many of those, where you're going to lose a bunch of games. Uh, but the scholar, the walk-on guy, they, they don't like it. They're not playing. And I, I look at a guy like Chris Rock. Chris Rock does not have to do this. Chris Rock does this because he loves his teammate. He loves Ohio State. And to see him go through senior tackle with his mom there and his dad, and I mean, that's why we do what we do. So you didn't know Costa, but, I mean, did you get any sense for what, how he I know him. I know him. He loved it. You know, he loved it. I had dinner with him a couple times, and, and uh, uh, it just was such a short period to, to spend with him. In the spread, can you do you have any sort of a uh, number you'd like to see your quarterback limited to in rushes, or is that determined by, by what the defense does? Well, it's determined by how the game's going. You know, the one thing that uh, obviously the spread, you know, uh, uh, that, that conversation comes up every year, and that's something that, yeah, we like to limit. You know, I think JT uh, in, in Braxton, and, you know, I'm trying to think from Alex Smith to. Chris Lee to Tebow. I mean, each guy carried it a different amount of times. And uh, a lot of those, a lot of times, like the uh, scramble for a touchdown, that's, I think that's what makes a great quarterback. Those are the Steve Youngs of the world, and that keeps drives alive. And the scramble is something that uh, changes the game of, of football if you have a guy that can move back there. Uh, the direct runs, uh, we limit those. Those aren't called very often. And then the, there's three there's three ways quarterbacks run the ball, and not not just uh, in pro style offenses. That's almost all scramble. Sometimes they'll run a Q draw, so you have scramble, direct run, which is a Q draw, Q power, Q zone, which we've done before. And then the other one's a read component, where a defensive player gives you the read to pull the ball and run with it. And so to answer your question, there is in our own mind, but a lot of time that during the course of the game. That, uh, that changes because the defense can play it however they want to play it. Does that make sense about the three? Coach, you're not an underdog very often. Um, is there any psychological edge there? I remember you talking about that in the 06 National Championship game, how you kind of use that with your players to kind of uh, psych them up. Are we underdog for this game? What's that? We're underdogs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, four, four, two. Um, Will you play that up with your guys? Is there any psychological edge? I know you have a. We'll see. You know, I'm going to see uh, evaluate how we show up to. I haven't seen. You know, we we didn't really discuss this one yesterday. It's just uh, uh, got some things going with them on a Sunday. But we'll we'll see. We'll see what uh, we have to do. Uh, I think uh, our players once they get uh, today, that's their big day of loading their iPads with the videotape. They're gonna because we we haven't watched them much. You know, we haven't played them in, uh, since last year, and then. Uh, that was really the first time like, for the last 10 hours yesterday and today. It was the first time I've been watching it. Call you real quick. Um, I know you said you are going to have a discussion with the staff last night. If something does happen with Cardale, something does happen with Jalen, would, would you burn the red shirt with Steven? Or? Hasn't been determined yet. Uh, you know, Jalen's in that mix as well. Jalen Marshall. Right, awesome. I asked the uh, after the game about the difference between the reps for the starter and back. 
practice. So there's some periods where uh, JT really got five reps in the car, get three, because the scout team, that doesn't seem like a big gap. It's been live. What's the difference when you try to manage the starter or backup to get them actually in practice? That's scout work, and then at the end of practice is the most uh, important work, and that's ones, twos, twos, ones, we call it. So the one one offense will go against, like the pros practice, because they don't have scout squads. So you take the uh, the first, excuse me, second team defense, and they'll card up what the, what the opponent's going to play. The starting quarterback gets all those. And then the two quarterback will go run the offense of the next one. So the, during practice, they get you know, probably... You know, like you said, five to three, five to four, uh, probably five to three reps. But those are scout team reps. The big ones at the end of practice, and those are usually 15, 16 reps. It's all the first team quarterbacks. That's where it changes drastically at the end of practice. Is there is there still value for Cardell having had a lot of those big sure. first team reps this spring? Or a lot of value. Yeah, yeah. He's Cardell. Uh, it's I mean, it's going to be his first start. Obviously, a really good environment. Uh, against a great top defense, but it's not like he's not taking snaps with the one offense or understands the concepts, so he has very good understanding. Last couple questions. Um, one of the things in JT's development this year that you brought up besides what we see on the field has been his preparation and, and leadership. Where is, is that an intangible that, how big of a deal is that for getting the athletic ability? But, uh, and where is Cardale? That scale, I guess. Well, we're going to find out. You know, obviously, not as detailed as he's pretty good, though. You know, you have to ask a probably good question for Tom, uh, Coach Herman, and uh, uh, I mean, it will be. I mean, it started last night, so um, I mean, he'll, we expect our quarterbacks to prepare a certain way. Now, what he does on his own—that's where JT was very unique and the ultimate grinder as far as you know the preparation. And, you know, you hear stories throughout, you know, college football history and pro football history about these just guys that are gym rats or, you know, that's JT was. You know, was Cardell t- that type? I'll let you know. Um, that'd be a great bonus for all of us, but he'll, he'll certainly put in a lot of time getting ready to go. Yeah, those leadership qualities, or can you not tell? I he hasn't been in that situation yet. He did in the spring. He actually did a good job. and um, he Remember, he was our backup, which he, he ran with the ones in the spring. Here, a couple questions. Number one, it, you guys have been sort of your program has been sort of confused. Did you say last couple questions or last question? Yeah, last, 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 last ten questions. You got to monitor some people around here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a little bit about uh, the text message that Coach had supposedly sent to his mom, uh, reportedly sent to his mom before he disappeared and stuff about dealing with concussions, etc. Are you confident? How confident are you in the way he was dealt with here from the standpoint of the I was told time? not to address anything, right? I, am, I can say this. I know that I, this is the best group of uh, medical people I've ever been around. And I don't know that. And the way they handle their business and the attention to detail. Okay. Do you do you limit runs now that you're sitting here with him and a richer guy? Is the backup quarterback, you know, how, how do you kind of approach that? Be Great question. Also going we've had that. We've had a miniature, a mini conversation about that already. Uh, that will be continued throughout the week. Uh, we have to win this game. Um, we're not saving them for next week, the week after. We're not saving anything. This is a big t- opportunity to win a Big Ten championship. Uh, so we're, we're still in the course of uh, working that through, Tim, but that is a very that, – that's, that's certainly going to be discussed daily. And then as we get to Friday – the game plans in stone. And even during the course of the game, I'll watch that very closely.